मुशफ़ी को मेहरबान मोहतरमुलमुखाम प्रोफेसर एम पठान साहब से मदिबाना अल्तमास करती हूँ कि वो अपने ज़र्र ख्याल से हमें मुस्तफ़ होने का मौका इनायत करें सबको आदाब हाजरीन जलसा सदर साहब की इजाज़त से अगर इजाज़त हो तो अंग्रेज़ी में शुक्रिया गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू प्रोफेसर मोहम्मद मियाँ वाइस चांसलर मौलाना आज़ाद नेशनल उर्दू यूनिवर्सिटी एंड इफ्लू प्रोफेसर वी एस प्रसाद फॉर्मर वाइस चांसलर इग्नू बी आर अम्बेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी एंड फॉर्मर डायरेक्टर नैक प्रोफेसर उत्तम रॉय राव गोयटे फॉर्मर वाइस चांसलर यशवंतराव चौहान ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी एंड भारतीय विद्यापीठ पुणे एंड माय एग्जीक्यूटिव काउंसिल मेंबर डॉक्टर विकास गुप्ता डॉक्टर भरत भूषण प्रोफेसर भूमैया वाइस चांसलर तेलुगु यूनिवर्सिटी प्रोफेसर रामेगौड़ा फॉर्मर वाइस चांसलर कर्नाटक स्टेट ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी प्रोफेसर वेंकैया जनाब अताउल्ला डायरेक्टर डिस्टेंस एजुकेशन प्रोफेसर इकबाल अहमद माय कलीग्स फ्रॉम मौलाना आज़ाद नेशनल उर्दू यूनिवर्सिटी बहुत टीचिंग एंड नॉन टीचिंग स्टूडेंट फ्रेंड्स पार्टिसिपेंट्स फ्रॉम वेरियस अदर इंस्टीट्यूशंस इनवाइटिस इट गिव्स मी इमेंस प्लेजर to be here today especially when i had the privilege of serving as the second vice chancellor of this university in its formative years i thank the vice chancellor professor mohammad mia and the director distance education for inviting me to be present in this seminar that seeks to address a very important and pertinent theme relevant to the indian social and educational scene today language as we are all aware is a very strong social identity and its speakers are profiled by that identity language is of course one of the basic irreducible criteria for education and thus any theme that seeks to address itself to education in a particular language also addresses social socio cultural aspects education today has become coterminous with the english language in india and most of the world today the reason for this is that english has become the global language of commerce and communication in fact if you see uh, the chinese which were proud of teaching in chinese language have started institutions imparting uh, courses in programs in english today and has become the standard medium of expression and sharing of thoughts and ideas knowledge could be created in any language from any culture but invariably has to find expression in english 
so that it may benefit from exposure, criticism and wider audience for further evolution and application. Science too employs English as it pushes at the ever-expanding frontier of knowledge and our minds and thoughts and culture too is being impacted upon and being shaped by English in some form or the other. Urdu occupies a unique place in this context as far as imparting modern education is concerned. The idea of imparting modern and higher education in, in Urdu is not new to India. Even as early as 1825, there are instances of Urdu being the medium in colleges and university education in Delhi with books in social science, philosophy and literature being translated into Urdu. Urdu also became the language for education in medical and engineering science in 1835 with Calcutta and Agra Medical Colleges and Thomson Roorkee Engineering College offering courses in medicine and engineering in Urdu. The idea came to its fulfillment in 1917 when the Usmania University Hyderabad embarked on a bold experiment to integrate and offer all branches of knowledge in Urdu. The whole gamut of modern education from pure to applied sciences, social sciences, arts and humanities, logic, philosophy and mathematics, all these and many more were taught, understood and examined in Urdu. The graduates of this university found acceptance and employability not only within the state of Hyderabad but all over the country. In fact, Professor Prasad, when he was uh, speaking, he uh, made a mention of uh, competition amongst the students and uh, learning in uh, mother tongue or regional languages or different languages uh, in India. Uh, here it is pertinent to mention that the Maulana Azad National University, which is uh, offering its program through Urdu medium, uh, the conventional mode. Uh, I remember the Department of uh, Management and Commerce and the Management and Mass Communication and Journalism. There used to be, I hope even today it is, the campus interviews and then students used to get placement uh, in this university. If, uh, apart from uh, learning your courses in Urdu, if you improve your English skill, communication skill, then there should not be any difficulty for you to compete with anybody, whether he has studied in English medium or any other medium. Seldom before had such language, large-scale experiments in offering modern and progressive education in, in an Indian language succeeded as it did in case of Usmania University. What happened after that is a different story after 1948. In a country that records 1,652 mother tongues, that is in India, and about 400 languages, which 22 in eight scheduled, it is imperative that non-English language medium education too becomes and necessary. In the specific case of Urdu, this is more suited since a study of the census brings to the light that Urdu is perhaps the only Indian language to be spoken in every state and union territory of this country with very de varying degree of intensity. It is the fifth largest language in India and is pan-Indian it spread. Indeed, it would not be wrong to say that it is the effective lingua franca of the country, linking separated geographies and diverse cultures and tennis as strong as threats. The open distance learning system has gained from strength to strength in India over the last three decades and has established itself 
as a strong operative force as far as democratization of higher education is concerned. It is an effective tool for provision of education to a heterogeneous groups of learners as well as an alternative channel to democratize education all over the world. ODL has grown because of its inbuilt advantages, which Professor Prasad has narrated. First, it is the economy. Since it does not require extra physical or academic resources and lead to maximum utilization of existing resources, in its second main advantage is its flexibility by offering students to study at their time and space. And third advantage is that it can operate over long distance and cater to widely scattered students, student bodies. Educators, now take the example of IGNO. IGNO is the, perhaps the largest uh, university offering ODL with uh, around 10 to 15 lakhs of students or even more uh, in its role. Educators in both industrialized and developing countries have therefore used ODL to help solve their problems of resources, access, quality, and quantity by opening doors to new group of students, raising the quality and standard of education, and expanding numbers. It would now be interesting to address the issue of equity and access of higher education in India by seeing some relevant statistics in the field. India has the world's largest educational system after China and United States, and produces nearly 25 million graduates annually. However, the graduate enrollment ratio, that is GRE of India, stands around 13% today, way below, below the global average of 40%. In terms of equity, there is a rural urban disparity where the graduate enrollment ratio is 8.99 around 9% for rural areas and 24.5% for urban areas we also find inter regional disparity with states like nagaland goa and kerala recording gross enrollment ratio of 30% while Tirupura, Jharkhand, and Orissa, and some other states recording between 7 and 8 percent of graduate enrollment ratio. The enrollment ratio based on eligible student, that is ERE, is useful estimate as it indicates the access to education to those who have completed the higher education, higher secondary stage. Social and inter-religious disparity too exist with GER of 5 to 11 percent in case of SC, ST, and OBCs, as compared to 24 percent for non SC, ST, and OBC. The GRE for Hindus, Sikhs, and Jains stands at 26 percent, while that of Muslims stands at 7 percent. In the above scenario, the ODL system emerges as the strongest and the most practical and the most practical approach to correct and arrest imbalances and to address to the concern of quality and access. There has been expansion in the conventional system too with increased funding, establishing more universities, institutions of higher learning, and introducing the con concept of innovation universities now a new university system, new uh, terminology, new university is coming, that is Navratna Universities, Center for Excellence, private universities, etc. But these initiatives will take time to fructify and establish themselves while the output period for an ODL system is much less. Coming to the point of position of Indian language universities, we find that their role is cut out for them. English and English-centric education is common in the islands of our cities and towns. But there are millions who are living in villages and remote areas where their mother tongue is necessary, the language of education. 
Promoting the exclusive English-centric model of education would not be advisable in this scenario of culturally and linguistically diverse society. By doing so, we would be injuring the basic ideals that we set out on of being inclusive. As a theory of pedagogy, it, it is proved that initial education in the mother tongue is more effective for grasping and retention of learning. There are innumerable examples amongst us of leading social scientists, scientists and intellectuals who are globally known and have initially studied in their regional languages. I think many of us here, uh, including me, who are uh, sitting, have studied their, uh, gone through their education in their mother tongue and come to use English in a later part of their education. One more fact that I would like to point out in this context of Urdu is that most of the distance education student are first generation students, first choice learners, unlike IGNO or any other uh, English language ODL universities where many students are enrolled to com complete or better their education. Further, a sizable percentage of nearly 50% are women, which is an important indicator of social change. Or any other uh, English language ODL universities where many students are enrolled to com complete or better their education. Further, a sizable percentage of nearly 50% are women, which is an important indicator of social change. These two factors along bring to light the immensely important role that a non-English language university can play in granting access and including vast sections of society in the noble endeavor of education. Given these facts, we should recognize the necessity of Indian language universities and their importance. The first challenge is of exposure. Normally, students of non-English language education require exposure in terms of interaction and knowledge of latest trends. Uh, in this uh, point, uh, let me um, say that uh, Maulana Azad National University in 2004, uh, when I assumed the office, uh, we had discussion with uh, stakeholders and many of my colleagues, and we thought it fit to introduce English as compulsory subject for our ODL students. They tend to live in self-limiting cultural shell that need to be engaged with the larger context. A step in this direction could be introduction of English and computers in the syllabus offered, students should be encouraged to travel and participate in cultural sports event which are conducted in other institutions so that cross-cultural exposure and imbibing of best practices takes place. Here AIU plays a very important role for the universities. If they are member, their students can participate in various cultural activities, sports activities conducted by various universities in the different parts of the country. ICT can play a big role in this direction by empowering the students through the internet. A very unique university in the sense that it is doing something very important, very beneficial, very advantageous, very progressive for the community which has contributed, which has made very commendable contribution to the cultural, literary, artistic, social, and other kinds of development of this country. The heritage which they have created, the community created a great heritage which needs to be nourished, cherished. And this university is doing that. And I have great respect for this university. So I am indeed very happy to be here on this occasion. Iqbal Saab, I am very happy to be here. Now, you have to spend 15 minutes for me, because you have invited me, so you have to listen to me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
a good deal has been said about this ODL mode of education. I am in the stage of life where man's mind is full of anxieties and anguish. I have been in this uh, educational field for the last 40 years or so. I have several, I have witnessed several developments in the field of higher education. Higher education has been a subject which engaged my thinking for decades together. But now, friends, in this stage of life, I am very much worried about certain happenings in the field of higher education. Two things which since recently have been bothering my mind, and that is one area is that of PhD research at the university level. I can talk about two hours on this particular subject. Infrastructure is the gift of distance education when they they enrolled 30,000 to 35,000 students, beard students, you know. Both the universities and afterwards the NCT has discontinued all such things, you know. This is what is happening. And in Punjab, when I was sharing with the, one of the vice chancellors and he said that it is hardly likely that we would pay the salaries to our teachers if we do not have a distance education in our courses. So I think this is, there are... Uh, government, uh, state governments are also responsible to force universities to start distance education just because they have to have some kind of rev some revenue and can run the university better. You know. I think the state, the state universities should also be somewhere or the other should be told very clearly by intellectuals that they should come forward if we want quality in distance education. I think we will be doing great disservice to those who have who are enrolled in distance education, not to provide them quality education, you know, because they will not be able to compete with, the, with those who are coming out of the regular system. What is the point in accessing the education when they are not capable of competing with those who are from regular education? I think this will be a great injustice for, for them. And I would say that education is preparation for life, whether it is through distance mode or through regular mode, you know. If it is not preparing you for life, I don't think that we have done enough as far as giving education to the masses is concerned. But this, thank you very much for this.